guests keep coming up. Was it Gussie? Yeah. Huh. Wonder if I should even put this down. Well, so far it's not too bad, but it's kind of still and then just a big ghost. Well, the Ani can handle a little bit yeah. of gas, as long as it's not too overpowering. Yeah, it's not bad, uh, comparatively. There's a bamboo storm. <laughs> bamboo storm. Ah, oh. oh, shade. How wonderful. Ooh, the seats are warm. The slight breeze is nice. Mm -hmm. I'm get my sunglasses on. It's a bright day today. Bright day. The cup it washer on quick wash usually goes through less than 20 gallons for wash and rinse. Hey everyone, Asha here from Pandemonium. It is a beautiful day with a slight breeze. It feels lovely. Today is laundry day as you saw me putting in the laundry in my cup it washing machine. And I've been using that thing for, I think this will be the second season and it's been working great. But as far as drying goes, I usually do it on the clothesline because it dries quickly here. But I have recently got an item which I'm going to do an unboxing here in a few moments. And it is a dryer. So we want to test it out and see how it's going to work out. Like I said, normally here on the property, whoa, here comes the wind my awning. <laughs> All right, wind, go away. The wind is great, by the way, for drying your clothes, as long as it's not too strong. But anyways, back to the subject. I've got a portable dryer that is going to be great because we do have overcast days. And as you've seen in my previous video, sometimes it does rain here, thankfully. But that's not always conducive to having to dry your clothes. So, I'm glad that I've got this portable washer, or sorry, portable dryer. Yes, I do have a portable washer. And I did take the portable washer with me on the road. But the problem that I ran into is that I never used it because I was always like, where am I going to hang my clothes? It's kind of awkward. I have a friend, I won't name names, but you know who you are, 
they hang their clothes on their awning, which is fine, and that's cool, you know, as long as it works. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to hang my clothes. And I don't have any room in my rig. I guess I could set up some kind of line for when I'm camping. I just think it doesn't look very cool to have your clothes hanging outside when you're camping somewhere. So I choose not to do that, and I'm glad I have this portable dryer because I think it's going to work amazing when I'm traveling because I can wash you know a few items in my portable washer and then I'll have a dryer to dry the stuff in and I won't have to hang anything outside or have it flapping in the wind at my camp spot if there is just like two or three items then yeah that's cool I could also hang that in my shower because I have done that before but if I have a whole load of clothes I really like I said, don't want to hang that outside. Hi, Memo. We're not doing that. You're like, I don't wear clothes. <laughs> you do sometimes. You have sweaters and coats that I have to wash in the winter. You look like you're getting ready to pass out. Are you sleepy? Is it nappy time? Well, you can take a nap. I've got to do an unboxing. I'm going to use my camping knife to cut up in the box. So let's go ahead and strap that on. I went ahead and stored it in the shipping container because it was a big box and I didn't want to keep it in my RV until I actually unboxed it. The company that makes this is Morris, M-O-R-U-S. Let's go ahead and get it cut open. I have a few boxes here that are empty. This one was for the lounge that's on the patio theater thing. I have to break these down and get rid of them. I usually, if they're just the plain cardboards, I usually just grind them up in the wood chipper and then use them in the compost. It does have instructions on how to open the box. Yay. Okay, another box. This one is the Morris Zero Vacuum Technology Ultra Fast Tumble Dryer. And it's got a nice, sleek, modern look. I like it. I wonder how much power it actually uses. Because I will be using this off-grid, so hopefully it's efficient. Alright, let's see. I like the look of it so far. It seems pretty compact. It is a side unit. And the controls are on the top here. Kind of reminds me of a large trash can. <laughs> Just on its side. So let's see. Um, ah, there we go. Let's get some of this stuff out. That's not a bad size. I believe my washer is bigger than this, so I would probably have to do smaller loads, which is fine. I would just keep on top of it every couple of days if this is efficient enough. But it is a portable unit, so you think that they would make it efficient. I'm going to go ahead and get this moved over to my rig and put it on the table, and then I'll look at the instructions and go over some of the specs. It isn't too awful heavy. I 
I have everything set up. I just need to go through the box. It does have a max line reading here. I believe you can only fill your clothes up to here. That way it can tumble and there still be some airflow. Huh. And like I said, this is mainly going to be for rainy days if I need to get a few things washed and dried or when I'm traveling and I can keep on top of washing clothes. Let's see, do I need my knife? Da, da, da. I believe I might. Where the heck? Okay, so here is the power plug. It's a pretty hefty one. And it seems like they have a drying rack as well. All right. And the instructions. Awesome. First, I'm going to go over the quick start guide and see if there's anything important that I need to know. The on and off switch is on the back side by the fan. There's a fan in the back or a vent. And then, like I said, the program switch or um, board is on top, the control panel. Open the door and put in the close. So it's basically simple. There is an auto, which is like 15 minutes. Press and start. The device starts. Works. The drum stops. All is done. The quick start guide says avoid using device in places with high humidity. Place in cool, dry, and ventilated place. Avoid direct sunlight. So that spot that I have is not going to be good. Although we're in the desert, so there's not a lot of humidity here. But I might move it into a shadier location. Would you think that the sun would help with the heat? But I guess they know their own machine. Leave at least 15 centimeters from the back of the dryer to the wall. Please do not exceed maximum permitted load. So for the power button, you want to press and hold, and then it'll come on. And then there's a plus and minus button that uh, will increase or decrease your time. There's a child-proof lock, and there are eight different modes. So, the mode light, selecting, pausing, and operating. Okay. So, I just have to wait for my laundry to get done, and I'll put a few items in there. And we'll see how much power it uses. And hopefully it works well, because this will be amazing. I really need something to dry my clothes when I'm on the road. Although, I don't like the fact that it doesn't work well in high humidity. Because if I'm on the East Coast visiting friends or family, it might not work too well. But that's okay. I'll figure it out. I'm mostly in the desert and dry air and climates anyways. While I'm waiting for my clothes to finish washing, like I had pointed out earlier, here's the max line right here. That is not glass. It is a hard plastic. And here's the door that opens. There is a seal on the back of the door. It has the drum here, the lint filter here, which obviously has to be cleaned like every dryer. I'm not sure if you have to clean it after every cycle or if you can wait a couple cycles. I guess we'll find out. There is a UV filter, or sorry, a UV light built in. So I wonder if that's what the purpose of that is for if it's for sanitizing or if it is what helps dry. There's a water tank here. And I guess I'll find out what the water tank is for. Here's a closer shot of the operation control panel. We have a power button here, the plus or minus to select, and then the mode button. On the back of the unit here, we have the exhaust. Then this is where the plug plugs into. We have a rocker switch for the power button. There's little rubber footing pads under here for balancing. It says here that smart Moria Zero automatically estimates the drying time and adjusts the drying temperature. It's awesome. Quick. 
Experience vacuum technology, try it and quickly dry a shirt in 15 minutes only. It's about how long it takes me on the clothesline. The next one says shirt, more frequent tumble action, warm air to reduce wrinkle of items like shirts. That's one thing that I don't like about the clothesline is that sometimes things can be a little stiff. So this will be nice for that as well. Designed to dry heat sensitive delicate items at low temperatures, washable and tumble dry silk only. The next one on here says warm. The dryer won't automatically stop till the setting time runs out. So to keep the items warm. Hmm. Okay. And it has a refresh mode, which is cool. It's suitable for reducing odor or dust on clothing. Not recommended for drying wet clothes. So that's this right here. I like the different modes it has. Oh, you can also do shoes in this. The drum does not rotate in this mode. Please use the, that's what the drying rack is for, to prevent damage to items. And then there's a sanitize mode, which combines the UV light, that's what the UV light is for, heat and vacuum technology for disinfecting items. Wow. There's a lot more modes on here than I thought there were. So far, I'm really liking everything that this gadget has to offer. Let's just see if it works like it should. So it says that it is suitable for drying bath towels. After use, there will be residual heat in the drum. Please be careful and avoid burns. I don't know if I would actually do bath towels because I can just hang those up and they usually dry quickly and I don't mind hanging those outside even if I'm camping because I could just fold it up and hang it over my RV mirror. And plus, I just feel like that would use a lot of power. It does say you need to clean your lint filter after one or two usages because if you don't, that the drying time will be longer if it's clogged. The filter is composed of a filter shell and a lint filter element and a filter mesh frame. Here's how to clean out the lint filter. You just grab the three small holes with your finger and pull out the filter. There is a troubleshooting area for if you're having problems with your unit. This is what I was really interested in was the specs. The name is Tumble Vacuum Dryer Morris Zero. And the maximum capacity is one and a half kilograms, which is a little over three pounds. The power supply is 110 or 120 volts. And the power is 1100 to 1200 watts. The weight of the machine is 13 kilograms. And the size, the width is 415, I they do these in millimeters. And the height is 528 millimeters. And the depth is 489 millimeters. Sensor door switch, overheating proof device. That's all the safety. I put in the cable and I have it plugged in to this watt meter here. Right now, nothing is on and running idle. It's 0.7 watts. Slid the table over. Slid the table over so that the item wasn't directly in the sun. I have an audience here watching me. <laughs> They're making sure I do everything correctly. Y'all to remind me of the older men that sat up in the balcony in the Muppets. Okay, I just grabbed a few items. Now, obviously, my washer, my portable washer, is much bigger than this unit, and it can hold a lot of clothes, which is what I like about the unit. If this was any bigger, it would probably not be as portable, but it could be slightly bigger or hold more. Because I think three loads of the dryer compared to my one load in the washer. So I'd have to do this three different times depending on how much power it uses. One other thing I like about this unit is that you could do underwear and socks because that's not pleasant to hang outside. Especially socks because there's so many of them. It takes so many clothespins. And uh, plus you just don't want your undergarments hanging outside for everybody to see. So this would be amazing for that. Okay, I'm going to continue putting clothes in. Right now, I'm just putting in t-shirts. Oops. Yes. Let's get my newly washed clothes dirty. Let's see. Um, so, that's probably, well, okay. I might be able to fit this in there. 
Let's see the fill line. You don't want to fill it too full because I'm sure it needs uh, air space to dry clothes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's really hard to read. That's why I was thinking it wasn't on the display panel there. Can you see it? Yeah, there it goes. So it's very light and hard to read if there's any kind of light outside. There it goes. It's not too awful loud. Let's see what the wattage is. Oh, there, it just jumped from 90 up to 400 watts. It's gonna shoot over 500. Ooh. Okay, now that it's getting warmed up. Wow. Okay, 700 watts. Oh, it's over 1,000 watts. So it seems to be resting at 1,000 watts, but it says it can use up to 1,200 watts. And if you want to compare it to anything, my air fryer uses about 900 watts. I have a 3,000 watt inverter, so this would work. It's dropped down to 700 watts. And most air fryers, mine's just a smaller one, so it doesn't use much, but most air fryers can use up to 1,200 watts, well, 1,200 to 1,500 watts, because it's a heating element. So, it's seeming to drop down. Between 6 and 400, while well, it's jumping back up, 700. 500, 400, so 400 is the lowest and it jumps up to seven or 800. So we'll see how it dries, it seeming to work just like a regular dryer. Although I can see where they say don't fill it too full or it won't work properly. I just want to see how well it dries. I'm hoping I didn't fill it too full, I don't think so, I filled it to the line. I should take that off too. There we go. Don't want that to get dry and brittle on there. Jeff pointed out another instance where this would work for you is if you're at an RV park and you can't hang your clothes outside and you are hooked up to power, this would be amazing because you could do it all in your rig, not have to go to the laundromat. Yeah, the display is kind of hard to read out in the light. But it does have a countdown on the display, which is nice. Less than 10 minutes to go. I also noticed there is a quick mode, and that's what I use on my washer to conserve on water. So maybe this would be good. I'm not sure how dry it'd get your clothes, but if it got them pretty dry. The washer does a really good job at wringing out the clothes and getting them pretty much dry. So let's hope this will be able to dry it in 15 minutes. And another feature I like is the shoe drying, which it includes the shoe rack. It has about 8 minutes left, so we'll check back then. I'm a little anxious to see how this works. I'm excited. Yeah, I never dried, I mean, I never washed clothes when I was on the road because I didn't want to hang things. And I really hope this works because that will be amazing. Yeah, uh, right. Oh, that's another thing, too. I could, um, so my battery, or my alternator charges my batteries, and if I wanted to, between locations, when I'm in my RV, I could always run it while I'm driving to the next location, which usually takes an hour or so, because we're going to the next destination, and then my clothes will be dry. Awesome! And that is basically, I won't say free power because I have to pay for the gas, but other than um, the alternator charge my batteries, I wouldn't be using that power anyway. It's all portable. It uses 1,200 watts. 1,200? At the most. Right now it is using 600. 600 watts. So that's less than an yeah, air fryer. Yeah, you're not even touching your No. Uh-uh. And look. But it, it has a quick though out here. Yeah, it has a um it yeah, it says it works best in non humid uh, -huh. uh situations. It has a shoe wrap. You can try your shoes. Oh. Uh. What? <laughs> I think it's gonna be awesome. 
I want it. Well, because, you know, I have the clothesline here. So I don't really need this. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing I don't like to do is hang my um, underwear and socks up. Socks is just annoying because there's so many of them. And then underwear, I don't want people seeing my underwear and undergarments. So that'll be awesome for this. And then plus when I'm on the road, I don't like, it. like, you know, we have a friend that hangs it on their awning. I don't want to do that. I think it looks yeah, if a little. Laundry on the road. Yeah, if, if I just keep up with it. You're going to get a washing machine like one like that too? No, I have that portable. You remember my cupboard washing machine? I take that with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But like I said, it can do, it's one load is three in here, so, but I'll just keep oh, up okay. with it. So that way I do small loads in the washing machine yeah, and then you don't have to use as much water and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I checked the clothes and they are still damp. They don't feel like they've dried too much. The one thing I do like about it is that it'll cycle one way for a little bit and then it'll stop and cycle the other way. All right, this is the second cycle. Clothes usually take longer than 15 minutes. They feel a little drier, but they're still moist. So I'm going to increase the time. It's usually it takes more than 30 minutes to dry clothes. All right, well, sometimes figuring out these systems can be a little challenging. Uh, I was reading more in the manual, and it says the default drying time is supposedly supposed to be 30 minutes. So, um... I don't know, I had it on Smart Sense and it's supposed to just sense it. Uh, I did, s it was going and I did stop it, so it's supposed to sense when it's dry and just keep on going. But I don't want it to run for an extended period of time. I want to figure out how much or how long it takes to usually dry a certain amount of articles. That way I know how long to put them in because I don't want it just to continuously uh, dry until it senses that it's dry because I just feel like that's a waste of energy. So just reading a few things, and what does it say? Well, it says a smart mode says select when the drying load is below 70 to 80 percent of the rated capacity. Otherwise, I guess it doesn't do a good job detecting how dry it is. Right. Uh, quick, the default is 15 minutes for that. Uh huh. Uh, is it, it says, at a higher temp? Recommended to use this mode when the load is light. Oh, uh, when the load is light. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's four. T-shirts. Uh, well, there. they I don't do know have a light for they it. have a shirt mode. Yeah. And it says suitable for shirts with tumble dry label after use. And and the default for that is 60 minutes. So. I put my socks and underwear in the clothes hamper, and I save this load for the dryer. I'm gonna try that 60 minute and see how it does. All right, so I'm going through the modes, and I was on Smart, which might not be the best option. And then there's Auto, which is just 15 minutes. And that's quick uh, mode. And then there's a shirt which says is 60 degrees Celsius, which is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So that might be a better option. And then there is silk, which is 40 Celsius, which is about a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And th those both were at 60 minutes. So... Then there's 30 minutes, which is warm. It's at uh, 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140. Um, so that might be an option too. Refresh, no. Um, what does that say? Oh, shoes, to dry shoes and sanitize. All right, so it seems like the shirt is the best option for this. Although it says 60 minutes. I don't know if it's going to need... I'm going to try 30 minutes and see how it does if it dries it. I can adjust the time. Okay, so I have it at 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140. And at 30 minutes. And this was on the shirt mode. And these are, like I said, my undergarments. So let's see how it works. Hopefully it works. If it dries it completely, which I hope, then maybe I can lower the dry time. I'm just trying to figure it out because it's not very specific with the manual. Doing a little more reading up on the refresh and sanitize and the water tank. I originally thought that the water tank was for water that you put in and it like steamed your clothes. But I see now that it is for condensation. I guess if it's uh, more humid, right? 
yes, more humid locations, then the that's where the condensation will collect. So you don't actually have to put water in there. I tried this new setting, which was the shirt setting for 30 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius, 140 Fahrenheit. And lo and behold, they actually feel dry. Now the socks that are thicker, they're still a little moist, but not too bad. But everything else it seems to be dry. So I could see if you had several shirts to do, like I was doing the first time, that you would want to put them in for um, 60 minutes on shirt. And that's the full run time. I've been watering my garden with the gray water. I like to do that so the water doesn't go to waste. It goes into a bucket and then I use the gray water on the garden so that way it gets a second use. There is one thing that I do like about this machine and that is clothes on the clothesline are kind of stiff and if you put them in here for five to minute, uh, five to ten minutes on shirt, then they come out soft. Ooh, and hot, and that's warm. Well, okay, I had those in there for ten minutes, and they're hot, like they're supposed to be. Wow. Okay, so that's gonna work. I'm going to put these in there. These came off of the clothesline. Yeah, it makes the, so, the clothes soft and not stiff anymore. So I'm going to try this for 5 minutes, not 10. So I think 5 minutes is good on shirt mode. Once it's been drying on the line and is pretty much dry, it's still a little damp. But once you put it in there for 5 minutes, it's pretty warm and the clothes feel soft. I'm going to give it another go. And I'm, now that I've got used to how this thing works, I'm doing it on shirt mode for 40 minutes at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 60 Celsius. And I'm going to see how this load of leggings is going to do. Okay, 40 minutes later on shirt mode. Let's see. Yep. Oh, they are completely dry. Okay. I think I got this thing figured out. Perfect. Now that I've used the dryer and gotten used to it, it's a little bit like my washing machine. It was a bit frustrating at first because there weren't good instructions on how to use it. But I've gotten used to it. I know the cycles. I know what is for what. And my purpose for it would on the homestead would be to dry my clothes on the line. And then when they're almost done drying, throw them into the dryer so they're not stiff for five minutes on shirt cycle and when I'm on the road I know that I can dry stuff I did a shirt cycle for 40 minutes and it seemed to dry everything dry it was nice and warm or nice and hot and dry everything felt soft that's the one thing I don't like about the dryer line is everything so stiff and I know you can add vinegar into your wash uh, wash cycle to soften up your clothes but there's nothing like a dryer and it does really soften up the clothes so yes I do like the product and I definitely do recommend it especially if you are in an apartment where you can't um, dry your clothes outside or like I said, when I'm traveling and I don't want to hang my clothes outside, this is going to work amazingly. And also, um, just the fact that it makes the clothes soft. I, I don't like stiff clothes. It's, it's annoying to put on stiff clothes. So yes, it's working out great. And if you are interested in this product, there'll be a link in the description below. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me during this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mwah.